If you want to get more wholesale leads, spend less money on them, and stop getting cussed out and hung up on, in this highly requested video, I'm going to share with you guys how I use real estate agents to submit offers for me for on-market distressed properties. What's up guys and welcome back. If we haven't met, my name is Lily, and this channel is where I document my real estate investing journey and bring you guys along with me. Now, I know that traditional wisdom and a lot of wholesalers target off-market properties by doing things like driving for dollars, cold calling, sending postcards, putting out bandit signs, all of that stuff. So there's a ton of information out there on those things and that's also not what I'm doing so I don't want to speak to it. I want to tell you guys what I'm doing and the success that I've seen with a different method. So I'm going to break it down for you guys, share what I've learned, and also give you some tips that will help agents be excited to work with you and possibly even give you access to their pocket listings, which are MLS listings that they haven't actually put out to the public yet. But before we dive in, if you appreciate this honest inside look into what it's like getting started on this path to financial freedom, it really does help the channel if you turn the like button blue and subscribe so you don't miss future content. All right, let's dive in. So first things first. When you see a property that's for sale on the MLS, unless it specifically says for sale by owner, it means that that property owner has signed a contract with a real estate agent and that agent has the legal and ethical right to represent them for that house sale. So when we're looking at on-market properties, we're not skip tracing the homeowner to try to go directly to them. We want to do things above the board. We want to stay legal. We want to stay ethical. And in my opinion, it's actually easier to work with the real estate agent than it is with the homeowner. And I'll share that with you guys in a minute. Now, if you're not sure exactly what I mean when I say the MLS, which I think stands for like the multiple listing service. I think that's what it stands for. But someone explained it to me this way a few years back. The MLS is where people go to sell their houses. And for those of us who are not real estate agents, we don't have access to the MLS. So we can think of it like a house, right? We can't go into the house and move things around. Um, we can't go take things out. We can't put things in. We don't have access. We don't have the key. But through sites like Redfin or Zillow, those are like windows into the house. So we can see the homes that are for sale. We might be able to tell a little bit of information about them, but we can't actually like change anything. So when I say the MLS, I'm just referring to homes that are for sale using a real estate agent. And when I say like Redfin or Zillow, that's how we find those homes. And so when I do look on Redfin or Zillow, there's a couple of things that I'm looking for that will tell me a property is in distressed condition and might be good for a wholesale. If you guys want more information on exactly what I'm looking for, definitely check out this video. But some of those things are like obviously a low cost. If it says selling as is, if it says investor special, there's a lot of things that kind of trigger you to think, hey, this might be a good deal for an investor. So once I find one of those properties, I'm going to scroll down the page and I'm looking for the listing agent's cell phone number. You want to make sure you call the person who has the contract directly with the homeowner. So don't call a buyer's agent, call what's called the listing agent or the seller's agent. And when I do call one of these agents up, there's three things that I'm trying to keep in the front of my mind that I kind of want to portray to them. Number one is confidence. I want to exude confidence and make them feel like I know what I'm doing, even if I may not be exactly sure of every little step in the journey. That's my approach. I think that when you exude confidence, people naturally believe in you. When you speak like you know what you're doing, people assume you know what you're doing. I'm actually going to show you guys one of the calls that I did with an agent to kind of get across this confidence. And remember, I'm making like five to 15 calls to agents every single day. And so I'm getting a lot of practice. And so the best way to get good at this is to just do it, to just pick up the phone, call, I might put together like a script of what I say for you guys. So definitely check the um, description for a link to that if I'm able to put it together by the time I put this video up. So first, I want the agent to have some belief in me. And then second is I want to let them know that I'm going to be working with partners and may assign the contract to them. And so what I say when I'm on the call is that me and my partners or we or I just never say I, I, I or that I'm going to be the only one doing it. And on top of that, I actually put specific wording that I got from a real estate lawyer in the contract so, so that I don't have any worries that every deal I'm doing, every contract I get is assignable to my end buyer. And I am going to show you guys exactly the wording that I use and what that offer sheet looks like. But that's number two. They've got to be aware that I'm working with partners and that this contract will probably be assigned. And then third, and this is something that's been super helpful to me to get more offers out the door, is I try to get as much information about the property, about the sellers, about the neighborhood, as much information as I can get out of the agent. I'm trying to get it so that I don't actually have to physically go walk through the property in order to get an offer. And the reason I don't want to go out to the property before making an offer is because when you're wholesaling, you're going to need to get properties at a really significant discount in order for it to make sense for you to get a fee to give it to an investor and for the investor to make profit and flip it by putting tens of thousands of dollars into it. So you're going to have to get properties way below market value, which means that most of your offers are going to be rejected because they're just going to come in so low. Because of this, I've decided to follow the advice of other wholesalers that you should only go out to a property, ideally once you have a signed contract on it, 
or if maybe you're just getting started like me, once you know that you might be in the ballpark of offering something that the seller is likely to accept. Like for example, if you're $100,000 off of the asking price, they want 200, you wanna pay 100, it probably doesn't make sense to go walk through that property. And that's something you wanna know before you ever leave your house so you can kind of put your attention on a better property that's more likely to be a deal for you. All right, so we've got our three things to keep in mind. Let's dive into each one. So with confidence, something that makes it easier to be confident when you're talking to a real estate agent is that they're usually always happy to get your call. Now, I do get some agents that are grumpy, but they're working on a commission basis. So the more deals they do, the more they get paid. And for the most part, most of them answer their phone, excited to talk to you and possibly do some business with you. In this video right here, where I filmed myself cold calling after going driving for dollars, most of the homeowners that I was cold calling never answered their phone, never called me back. And the ones that did answer their phone often hung up on me, told me that they weren't interested in selling or cussed me out. Now that's just something I'm not gonna have to deal with when I call a real estate agent because you know they're a business professional and they're not gonna cuss you out because you're asking about homes that are already for sale. If you do wanna see that cold calling video though, I'll be sure to link it in the description for you to watch later. But for now, here's some footage of a recent call I had with a real estate agent. Hi there, I was calling about a listing. Um, I got this number off the listing. Oh, okay. Do you know what the address is? Yes, it's 5338. Looks like it might be a fixer-upper. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, that is just went on today. I saw. I'm. Have you gotten a lot of calls about it yet? Uh, we have had a few. Okay. So. Yeah, I'm an investor, and there's a few of us investors who try to act quick, you know, on these, these fixer-uppers. So, um, yeah, yeah, I was just wondering what you might be able to tell me about it. Hang on. Let me pull it up here for you. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Um, it is 2818 square foot. Okay. It's 140, so it's, you know, $49 a square foot, which is uh, crazy. So um, let's see here. Do you have an email? I can email you the disclosures on it if you like. I would love that. If you could email me the disclosures and a CMA, maybe that'd be super helpful. Okay. What's your email? It's L I L I. I will text you my contact. Okay. And um, send you anything I can on the house and then I'll send you a CMA for the neighborhood. Okay. And have you, have you been inside the house? You know, I literally have not been in the house. We just listed it yesterday. Gotcha. So. Gotcha. Um, is there anything that you could tell me about it? Kind of just let you know the way that we, we are investing. It's myself and two other partners and we, um, we don't have an agent on the team. So we like to just work directly with the listing agent. That way we cut down on communication issues and, then you can get the 6% with us. Um, so just kind of ask if you have any insights for us in terms of, I know you haven't been there, but if you know anything about structural issues or roof, how old it is, just anything like that. You know, that will all be on the disclosure. So mm -hmm. let me open this up here too. Let me double check. Yeah, it does have a disclosure on okay, it. Okay, so. great, great. I'll read that over. Yeah, it should all be on here. And I will just send that over to you. And then I don't think there's any other documents with the house. So I'll send that to you and you can look that over and I'll send the CMA with you with it also. How about that? Yeah, that would be great. I'm going to run some numbers right now just on my end. And then I'll, I'll kind of cross-reference mm -hmm. with your CMA. And I would love to get you an offer sure. this afternoon. Okay, sure. Do, would you like to see it? Well, let me uh, run some numbers. Let me see how close to list price I can be, which will probably be pretty close, you know, with what you guys are asking. Yeah, but, um, $49 a square foot, definitely. Because, because it's, you know, priced so well, I would love to just submit an offer and, and see what we can do and then, you know, go from there just so we don't slow things up trying to schedule an appointment. Okay, what kind of, now are you going to be financed or are you paying cash? It will be cash. It'll be cash, okay. 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 Well, let me get this stuff over to you. Awesome. Thank you. We'll talk soon. You're welcome. All right. Bye-bye. Uh -huh. Notice how I did a couple of things. I told them that I'm an investor. I'm an investor. And I asked what the story is to try to figure out what they could tell me about the house or about the owners. Yeah, yeah. I was just wondering what you might be able to tell me about it. I also asked for a CMA. If you could email me the disclosures and a CMA, maybe that'd be super helpful. And basically tells me all of the homes that are for sale, 
pending to be sold or sold within a certain distance around the house that we're talking about. So that, and that CMA isn't what I depend on to find the ARV of the property. If you want to see exactly how I find ARV for an actual deal that I made an offer on, definitely check out this video right here. But the CMA does serve two purposes. I can kind of double check it once I run my own numbers and see if I'm accurate to what's happening on the CMA. And it tells the agent that, hey, I'm gonna base my offer based on what other things in the neighborhood have sold for. And so asking for the CMA just makes it seem like you know a little bit more what you're doing and you're really kind of dialing into what home values are in that particular area. I also mentioned that I had partners would be working on this deal with me it's myself and two other partners and then finally i offered the agent the opportunity to double dip on this deal and get six percent commission with me we don't have an agent on the team so we like to just work directly with the listing agent that way we cut down on communication issues and then you can get the six percent with us um so what that means is that they have a contract with the homeowner to sell the house on their behalf right and because of that they get three percent for being the seller's agent now Normally, another real estate agent would come in with their client and they'd get 3% for being the buyer's agent. And this is why you want to call the seller's agent directly, because if you offer them the opportunity to be both the seller's agent and your buyer's agent on this particular deal, well, now they're able to make 6% commission, which means that they'd make double selling this house to you than they would selling it to someone else who's using a buyer's agent. Doing this has made agents be much more enthusiastic about my deal and it's gotten agents to give me access to listings that aren't even on the MLS, aren't even showing up on Zillow or Redfin yet because they want to give me first crack at that deal because then they can make 6% on it. And then finally, they're oftentimes going to ask when you want to come make an appointment. And again, we want to avoid going out to houses just to see them before we actually run the numbers and see how realistic our offer might be. And so I like to say that I'm going to run some numbers, see how close to list price I might be, and then maybe even move quickly. That kind of sets them up to know that I might make an offer before coming out to see it and uh, just lets them know, again, kind of that, hey, I do kind of a little bit know what I'm doing. Okay, sure. Would you like to see it? Well, let me uh, run some numbers. Let me see how close to list price I can be, which will probably be pretty close, you know, with what you guys are asking. Yeah, but, um, $49 a square foot, definitely. Because, because it's, you know, priced so well, I would love to just submit an offer and, and see what we can do and then, you know, go from there just so we don't slow things up trying to schedule an appointment. Now, the second thing I like to keep in mind is that even though I've already told her I have partners, there's going to be some things that I need to include when I make the offer so that down the road, I won't have any problem assigning this property for a fee to the end buyer. And it has wording that I got from a real estate lawyer that I paid for using my first YouTube monetization check. Yeah, I'm going to do an entire video on all the things that I talked about with that lawyer. But one of the things he did tell me to include was this phrasing right here. Seller understands that buyer may assign this contract to a buyer owned or buyer related entity. He, and he assured me that buyer owned or buyer related just meant that I had the freedom to assign this contract to anybody that I knew and wanted to assign it to. And so when I submit the offer sheet and it has that wording on there, the real estate agent is going to put that wording into the contract with the seller. And everybody's going to be aware that one, I do have partners, which I told them on the very first call. And then two, that this contract may be assigned to one of those partners at closing. A must for me is that before I get off the phone with that agent for the first time, I have to get enough information to determine if this is going to be a light, average or heavy rehab. Now, unfortunately, the agent that you guys saw in the call, she hadn't actually been inside the house yet. And so she didn't know much about the property and told me that most of the information would be on the disclosures. By the way, disclosures are like what the seller fills out when they go to sell the house, which is basically, hey, do you know how old the roof is? Do you know of any plumbing issues? Do you know of any, I don't know, just like issues with the house. Sometimes they're honest, sometimes they're not. And so I always like to ask the agent because if they have been in the house, they might give me more information that's actually on those disclosures. And just take notes and get as much, 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 much details as you can. One thing that I didn't ask this agent for and I should have is I should have said, what are the outer bounds of this neighborhood or where should I keep my comps to? And this is because I'm going to be looking for comparable houses, right? If it's a three bedroom, two bath, 1500 square feet, I want to look at other three bedroom, two baths, 1500 square feet in that area, in that neighborhood. Think about it this way. If somebody was going to buy my house, what other houses would they also be looking at? They're probably not going to be looking at a house that's 20 minutes away. They're probably going to be looking in that specific neighborhood, maybe because they want to stay in that school district or it's close to work or whatever. And so you should ask the agent, and I didn't do it on this one, but I've gotten in the habit of doing it more recently and it makes it so much easier to run comps. Where should I keep my comps to? What are the out of bounds of this neighborhood? They'll tell you, oh, stay between these two streets and east of whatever. 
right? So that's another really important thing that I'll put on the scripts to remind you guys to ask me with calling agents. So if you are interested in going after on-market deals, definitely check out this video I did that goes super in-depth into how you can find the ARV, run those comps, estimate your rehab budget, and come up with an offer price. Because for me, that was the toughest thing to do when I got started. But now that you know how to talk to the agents, check out that video so that you can know exactly how to get to an offer price. And don't forget to get those free downloads in the description below. I post videos most Tuesdays, Fridays, and Sundays. And until next time, thank you guys so much for watching.